guys welcome back to our channel and as you may notice Darren is not filming with me today so this video is going to be about our pregnancy and labor and delivery um, story and kind of all the things that we went through so if you guys do want to hear like his side and the way he felt and the way he handled things um, just let us know and I'm sure he'll be happy to film a video about his side and the way he did felt. Um, want to answer a few questions from our last Q&A and it was um, about like me being on birth control and how long it took me to be pregnant. Excuse me. So in our last video, we did mention that our pregnancy was planned. And obviously, I got off birth control at a certain time and stuff like that. So I'll give you guys the exact dates and what birth control I was on and stuff like that. So um, first things first was I got my birth control removed November 16th of 2018. And we found out that I was pregnant um, December 15th, 15th of 2018. And so I would say about a month because the 15th, I was six days late already. So if I would have waited till the 16th, I would have been a whole week. So it would have been an entire month that it took me to get pregnant. Um, I was on um, the next plan on. There was the one in your arm for three years. I was on that, I think for maybe six years. I'm not completely, no, not six years. It was less than that because I didn't finish. Um, my first round, I was three years. And then the second round, I think I was only on it for a year. So maybe four years. Um, before I decided that we wanted to remove it and stuff like that. So, um, so that's the birth control that I was on. It took me a month and yeah. Oh, another thing was um, they said if I was taking like any supplements or anything to help me get pregnant. So my OGBYN, when I went to her to get my birth control removed, she told me um, since I was wanting to get pregnant to start taking prenatals like right away. Because it, it almost like preps your body for being pregnant because you're going to take those prenatals throughout your entire pregnancy and after, especially if you're breastfeeding. So, um, that's what I, I did is I took prenatals and maybe that's what helped me. I'm not completely sure, but I definitely recommend if you are trying to get pregnant, start taking those prenatals right away. Okay, so those were my two questions and, um, I'm going to be looking at my phone because I have like it, like, um, I guess like kind of like week by week and like when the complication started and stuff so that I don't get off track and ramble and stuff. So, um... I, so at the beginning of my pregnancy, obviously we found out that I was pregnant. Prior to me being pregnant, I was having stomach issues where like I was throwing up all the time. Like greasy foods were not sitting well with my stomach. And I kept going into the ER because there was days where I was just throwing up constantly. like Or I was having like severe pain in my stomach. So I was definitely like iffy if I was pregnant or if it was just my... Um, stomach because when I found out that I was pregnant I was already I was already sick so I was already feeling bad like I was already like throwing up having those symptoms but I wasn't sure if it was my stomach or it was I was pregnant because obviously I was trying um but uh so yeah so that was kind of like hard to distinguish without a pregnancy test so um with all of that being said, probably my first trimester into the middle of my second trimester, I had 24-7 sickness. It was terrible. Water, crackers, nothing was staying down. And I was starting to lose weight rather than gaining. And so it was kind of like, I was kind of like, what the freak is going on? Like, this can't be normal. Like, for you to lose weight while you're pregnant, like, you usually gain weight. And so it was just very, like... A lot. It was a lot, a lot. Um, me losing weight obviously raised my concerns, but the doctor was just like, it's okay, like, you're still, like, pretty much you're still early. So, like, if you really gain your, like, um, um, weight in, like, the last trimester, so she was just like, I'm not really too worried because the baby's heartbeat's good, like, you're, you're doing fine. So, I was just like, okay, you know, that's fine, um, so I didn't think anything of it, but like it was rough to like live like that every single day. Like you can't eat, you can't drink, like you're you're trying to figure out what will 
sit in your stomach and what won't. So it was just very hard. Like it was harder than my stomach issues before. And then like I had mild cramping but not severe. So I just kind of was like, oh, well, obviously it's like your baby's implanting excuse me, implanting in you, so like, that's the cramping and stuff, so I wasn't really concerned at the beginning, like, I was just a little bit, because honestly, I just wanted to get out of the miscarriage stage, and I think that's with every mom, like, they're excited, but they just want to get out of that miscarriage stage of you, like, miscarrying early, you know, so, and I know you can lose your baby any week, any time, even at 40 weeks, you can lose your baby. At 30 weeks, you can lose your baby. And I know that. But in my head, I was just like, let's just get through like the trimester where I can finally breathe about like not really like there was a lower chance of you miscarrying, you know? So, so yeah. So, um, that was like kind of the way everything went. And then, um, 20 weeks came around and we found out what we were having, I believe, at 17 weeks. And we went to just like, um, 3D ultrasound. Um, it's not covered by insurance. At least ours wasn't, wasn't covered by insurance. And, um, we kind of just went there. We paid for it and stuff. And because we wanted to find out. And that was kind of our gender reveal because we didn't have a gender reveal because we already had planned having a big baby shower. And then, so, back to the 20 weeks. So, at 20 weeks, um, if you've been pregnant before, you know that it's a big anatomy scan. So, they check the heart, they check the stomach, they check the brain, the fingers, the toes, the legs, everything. Make sure there's no um, defects or deformities or anything like that. So, um, that scan came and, you know, everything was good. We did have to leave for, like, a short uh, period of time because I did have to go drink orange juice because... The ultrasound tech could not get a good um, picture of the four chambers of his heart. So he was like, we just, needed him, we just need him to flip, nothing to be concerned about. Go drink some apple juice or orange juice, come back, and hopefully he'll be flipped. Thank God, like, within me drinking that orange juice in, like, five minutes, he had flipped. So we went in, he flipped, and they did the ultrasound, took the pictures, and that was it. Sent us on our way. And then um, I would say that following week, I got a phone call um from a doctor obviously it wasn't his doctor because people for like tests like that different doctors call you so um a doctor called me let me know that they had found something in his scan well i missed the phone call so there was a voicemail so when i had heard the voicemail i called back right away and so i called back and they pretty much just explained that our son has a bright spot in his heart which are the first um signs of down syndrome and like um kind of like autism and stuff like that like all those like disabilities it's like the first sign of those things so I obviously like I was super upset I was super like emotional I didn't get emotional on the phone like I felt the pit in my stomach the pit in my throat and everything but I was just like okay just breathe 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 um, but they said because I was so early, it wasn't really something that they were concerned about. All they wanted to do was draw my blood again for the levels, um, to check my levels for Down syndrome, which obviously they did at the beginning of my pregnancy and my levels were not high or close near to Down syndrome or anything like that. Um, so they were like, we just want to check because obviously if our baby does have Down syndrome, it's going to show through my blood work. So we did that and, um, so... We had an appointment, I think, like, that same week that I got that phone call. And so, you know, I obviously called Darren and I let him know what was going on. And he was just, he was really, like, shocked. Like, we were just like, what the heck? Like, we were not expecting that at all. And it kind of hurt, honestly. Like, I was really hurt. Not because um, my baby was going to be Down syndrome. Because we didn't even know my baby was going to be Down syndrome or anything like that. It was not anything like that it was just like gosh like what is he gonna have to face in this world and stuff like that because obviously if you know this world it's cruel and it's cruel to people that are different and I've learned over the years people are all the same no matter their disability no matter their color their race nothing and I definitely becoming a mom makes you put that into perspective that 
everybody is the same no matter the differences you know what i'm saying like we're all human we all have feelings and everything so i just kind of like i was just scared honestly i was scared because even though we were out of the mark of miscarrying we could still lose our baby and so i was just scared like what was going to happen you know like any mom would be scared hearing that so um that week we had our appointment we went we talked to our OWYN, and you know i explained to her we got the phone call and she was like yes i did see that in your chart but she didn't sound like she was like super concerned like she wasn't like oh my god like we got to get this checked or anything like that she was like excuse me goodness gracious um she just kind of said like um I don't want to be scared for you i don't want to be anything like that for you because um right now we don't know what it is and then uh, mind you i didn't even mention this was when my blood work first came back when i first took my blood work i was um i have this like heart defect gene like i can't so it's like a positive gene i can't remember what it's called but i was I was a carrier and so um they said darren had to get his blood work drawn right away because if he was a carrier our son was going to be a carrier as well and his heart was obviously going to not be what it needed to be so so that's what was scared me was that as well like so we obviously got Darren's blood work and he was not a carrier so my son was automatically a carrier because of me but if both parents are carriers it affects your baby a lot so um so yeah so like that what happened that's what happened and stuff so I was really concerned about that as well because I'm like oh my god like I did this to my baby like what the heck is wrong with my body why can't my body do what it needs to do for my baby you know so we went and she's like, I just want you to draw your blood and then, you know, we, we'll go from there. I said, I'm not super concerned because he can outgrow this spot because it could be extra fluid. It could just be several different things and we were thinking the worst thing it could be. So, so then we went, we got the blood work done and stuff like that and everything was good. Nothing came out. She's like, I think it's just extra fluid. We'll, we'll obviously check on it later on and make sure that... It does go away because if it stays and obviously we need to do further tests than just drawing blood so i was like okay so that was our first scare and we were like okay what no that was actually our second scare but our first scare wasn't as dramatic as this one and so um okay sorry the baby started crying he's not feeling too good so he's been like extra fussy and stuff um okay so sorry let me get back to my notes so i can figure out where i was okay so that was our like second our like that would be our first like major scare so then we go into um 30 weeks and um in the meantime obviously i'm still a little bit sick but it start it's starting to die down a little bit and stuff and at this point i'm just tired so um so then um sorry my hair is being weird Okay, so at 30 weeks, um, I went in, well, we already had, like, our regular appointment, I guess. Like, our appointment was already scheduled, but that day, and I believe the day before, I was having cramping, but then the day of my appointment, it was, like, severe. So, we go in, and that whole day, I'm just in severe pain, and, um... Our appointment wasn't until I believe like 3 o'clock so I was just kind of like trying to just fight through it and I was just like okay you know like let me try to work let me take my mind off of things and let me just like not think about it but it just got worse and worse throughout the day and um so like we go into our appointment and my doctor just looks at me and she was like what's going on like you look terrible and I was like I feel terrible so I like tell her like I've been having what I think is contractions and I am in like really severe pain and I was like crying and I was like trying to breathe and I was just so uncomfortable and so she puts me on the monitor to see if I am contracting and I am so I'm contracting and stuff and um so she goes well you need to go to labor delivery because you are contracting and they either need to stop your contractions or if they can't stop them 
you're having a baby, you know? And so, um, so she, before I go to labor and deliver, she wants to make sure that the baby is okay in the meantime, because she doesn't want to send me to labor and delivery, um, obviously in my car if things are going wrong with my baby. So, um, she did an ultrasound and she made sure the baby's heartbeat was okay and everything, which he was fine. He was doing okay and stuff. But she kind of had this weird face on her when she was measuring me. And I was kind of like, what is going on? But in my head also, like, I was in so much pain that I didn't have time to, like, hear what anything was going on. You know, like, I just needed this pain to stop or I needed someone to tell me what was going to happen, if we were going to have this baby, what, what I was going through. Which, obviously, she couldn't without further observation from, like, a hospital and more tests after that. So... After that, she kind of just was like, okay, go to labor and delivery, like hurry, 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 and just kind of breathe through it. So that's what I do, and I go into labor and delivery, and they put me in triage, and they're like, okay, I'm going to put you on the monitors. I was in so much pain, I didn't even want to get on, on the bed. Like, I just wanted to be on the floor on all fours. And she goes, well, we need to check the baby's heartbeat, make sure the baby's not in distress, and see how um, close your contractions are. Because obviously I was contracting... But they weren't, like, I guess they weren't real contractions, I guess I would say. So, um, she, um, so they start doing, like, um, more blood work. Like, I take a urine test and stuff. Well, when I do that, they come back with the test and they go, you're passing a kidney stone. And that's what's going on. Um, and then I also got an ultrasound done on my kidneys and my gallbladder. And that's what kind of also determined that I was passing a kidney stone because obviously they could see it. And then they also let me know that I had gallbladder stones. So that was just, that was just dandy. So they were like, you're not like in labor. You're not like anything like that. You're just passing a kidney stone, which can cause contractions or what feel like contractions, which is really bad cramping. And so I was just like, okay, so my baby was okay. Everything was good. But in that moment i definitely thought i was in labor i definitely thought like we're having this baby today so um but before we leave she kind of mentions to me that i need to go see a specialist because in my chart for my OGYN, um with all my symptoms that from that appointment that day she mentioned that my baby was measuring small and so um so she goes um your job your OGBYN should send you over everything either through email or she'll call you and let you know um, next steps for when your baby is... God, I can't remember what she said, but it's pretty much when your, your baby is measuring smaller than what it should. So, um, so we were like, okay, so I, I did. I checked my record because Kaiser, the way Kaiser is, they have an app and you can get like all your medical stuff through the app and your doctor can email you you can email your doctor and stuff so I looked just to so that I could email my doctor but she beat me to it so she obviously emailed me first and she let me know um here's the number this is what I saw um we obviously need the specialist to confirm it because they do a more detailed scan and stuff like that and so she pretty much just said like you're measuring a lot of weeks behind than what you are and I think by then I was only measuring maybe 24 weeks and I was 30 weeks. Um, so my baby was definitely measuring a lot smaller. And so um, so she goes, you need to go see maternal fetal medicine. So obviously we, we call, we make the appointment, which when you see specialists like that, they're kind of booked far out. So we didn't have an appointment for, I, get, I believe, like two to three weeks. So we were kind of just like... Trying not to stress about it, but at the same time, given our history before with all our complications, it was definitely something in the back of our mind that we were worried about. So, um, we have our appointment, our appointments, you know, coming or whatever, the day of our appointment, we go in and we made it for the earliest appointment as possible because we just wanted to know what was going on. Like, were we going to have to deliver earlier than what we expected? Like, we needed to be prepared. 
so um uh, when it started to become a little bit real for us was like our baby really can come at any time now because of all the complications like this doctor we can go in today and this doctor says you're getting induced tomorrow or in the next like 10 15 minutes you know like go home get your stuff and go to the hospital type of thing so we were definitely prepared for the worst um we just like as far as like housewives we were not prepared like we did not have his bassinet we did not have like anything prepared like we were still 10 weeks out and obviously you know like i was like super stressed about all of that and not to mention we needed to still do our maternity shoot we still had our baby shower we were still planning our baby shower so like it was just stressful to hear that our baby could come sooner than what we expected so we the day of our appointment um we go to fetal ter um uh, maternal fetal medicine sorry and they kind of just confirmed that our baby is definitely measuring smaller um which is obviously it is a concern but the doctor pretty much checked his umbilical cord to make sure blood and fluid was still going through there because if the blood and fluid stop then the baby's like heart stops like and all of that so um they checked his cord and everything was still flowing pretty good it wasn't like a slow flow it was still flowing pretty good so it was just kind of like my placenta was not feeding my son anymore like it wasn't doing anything for him it, it was just in there and that was it so um they kind of just told me like your placenta is pretty much damaged it's not doing what it needs to do but his umbilical cord is still getting blood it's still getting fluid so we're gonna keep him in there a little bit longer you're gonna have appointments every other week and you're gonna start not start doing non-stress tests which are called nsts twice a week so um i started that that following week the nsts which are non-stress tests so what they do is they check for contractions and to see if your baby is in distress while contracting or if your baby's like heart rate is dipping it checks just to make sure your baby is doing good so i started doing those twice a week and i started seeing the specialist every other week and um as time went by every other week they kept saying let's just keep him in there let's just keep him in there well at 36 weeks they kind of made a plan that they wanted to induce me um that they wanted to induce me sorry people were walking by that they wanted to induce me at 36 weeks um and stuff like that well 36 weeks came and um I was not induced because the cord was still doing good obviously he was still measuring small he was still being he was still not getting like nutrition or anything that from my placenta it was just not doing it for him so um yeah so it was just kind of like we were kind of keeping him in there because the blood was still going through his body and stuff and it would have been safer for him to be inside me than to be outside of my body and like him having more complications already so um so yeah but another concern that they had every single time we went for the nsts was my baby was not an active baby my baby was very very mellow barely moved barely did anything really like when he kicked he kicked like six times in a row and that's all i felt in that day so it wasn't like i felt him very actively or anything like that he wasn't super active so they were just very like concerned and they were definitely definitely always checking that like making sure that his heart was still beating and that he was still moving even just slight movements worked for them and so um so yeah, so then um, this kind of brings us to our labor and delivery because at 36 weeks we go in, we get checked, everything's good. Um, like I said, he's still measuring small, but his heart's still beating. He's still, he's still doing, I guess, good for being a small baby. So this brings us to our labor and delivery. And so I'm trying to hear if the baby's crying okay so mind you at 36 weeks we saw the specialist 37 weeks we're at 37 weeks 
August 1st, we go in for just our regular OGBYN appointment and our NST. And, um, you know, we go in and they kind of, they hook me up, they always hook me up to the monitor right away because that's what takes the longest. And then if they need to do an ultrasound after that, then they will and stuff like that. So I go in and I was super, super excited because that day after our appointment, we were going to go um, baby shower shopping and stuff like that for our baby shower. And pretty much go, going to the hall, picking our centerpieces, doing everything. So it was just really, um, I was just really happy to, you know, be going and doing all that stuff for our baby shower. And for me, that day was a really good day because sun was moving like crazy our baby was moving like crazy that day like he was active he was going crazy i was so happy that day like it was a good day and i even like got in the car when darren picked me up from work and i was like he's gonna pass his nst today like i'm so happy like excited for him to pass an nst without an ultrasound um because all the nsts that we had before he was not moving enough for them and his heart was not accelerating so we always had to do an ultrasound for him to pass and for us to go home so so yeah so i was just like it's just gonna be a good day like it's just gonna be great we're gonna go run our errands we're gonna do what we have to do and everything's gonna be great so we go and just as i imagined he passed his nst and um she was like the doctor was very surprised because we had the same like doctor or I guess like nurse every time through our NSTs and she was just like so are we gonna pass today or what are we gonna do you know what's this baby gonna do today so I was like I think we're gonna pass I'm super excited he's been moving like crazy and I think that he's doing good and so she was like that that sounds great like I'm really happy hopefully we can get get everything on the monitor so I was like okay so, you know, he did pass and stuff, and then my appointment is starting to come to an end, and she, um, at these appointments, they always do your blood pressure, they always do your temperature, they always do your weight and stuff like that. So, she does my blood pressure before we leave, and she kind of has a weird look on her face, and I'm just like, oh, God, what is it? Like, in my head, I'm just like, I just need one an appointment to go good. I just need one appointment to just go the way that I need it to go. He's talking to himself. No, he's not talking to himself. He's crying. Okay, sorry for the interruptions. Like I said, he is sick, so he's obviously, like, very fussy. And I'm trying to do the best that I can with taking care of him and filming at the same time. Because, let me tell you, I tried to film this video three times. First time, I was super emotional. I just wanted to cry every single time I thought, like, spoke about our complications. And, um... Second time around, my eyelash was falling off. So, I was like, this video needs to come out right. It needs to be good. So, I'm hoping this is going to be our last take of trying to film this video. Okay, but as I was saying, she checked my blood pressure. She had a weird face and stuff like that. And I, so, you know, I just kind of, every appointment that I got bad news, I always got discouraged because it felt like every appointment we were going in, and I get emotional because every appointment, when I say every appointment, it was always something. Like, as you get later in your pregnancy, you go um, weeks without having an appointment. Like, you go almost just monthly. And every appointment would just be something new and something just more complicated. And so, it was hard. Like, it was hard to take in a lot of the things and it was super an emo emotional roller coaster. So when I went in there with the mindset of, and I'm not gonna cry on camera because honestly, I cried about this a lot and I think I'm finally coming to terms with the way that I feel about my pregnancy experience and just the way things have went. So I just get like emotional. I get that little like pit when I think, like when I talk about it and stuff. So it's just, it's just a hard thing, you know? And, um, so yeah, so I was, in my head, I was just like, this can't be happening. Like, the one appointment that I think something's going to go good and something is just going to be finally great, like, I feel like it's just raining on my parade, you know? So she checks it again. She's like, wow, that's really high. And so she's like, I'm going to check it again. So she does, and it comes out high again. And she was just like, 
I think you need to go to labor and delivery. She's like, I'm gonna go talk to your doctor, which is my OGYN, and I'm gonna talk to her, see what she decides and stuff. So she, my OGYN comes and talks to me, and she goes, given the history, given that your baby is already small, I think you need to go in. And so she's like, and I really, I'm gonna put in there that I hope that I recommend that they induce you either tonight or tomorrow because it's just at this point it's not healthy for you it's not healthy for your baby it's not healthy for your well-being anymore or your mental health anymore and so obviously I was just like okay and I, we get out and obviously I'm an emotional wreck because I did not plan on going into the hospital today like i didn't plan on it i didn't want to i didn't want to do it honestly like it just wasn't in my plan that day and for me to have such a good day and then for like stuff like that to happen i just felt like gosh like why me why me why me you know why my baby and so come to find out that that's why the baby was so active that's why the baby was moving so much because my blood pressure was so high obviously it was probably uncomfortable for him and honestly I didn't feel any symptoms like I didn't feel any different than what I felt every day all I know was my feet were super swollen but I heard that that's what comes with pregnancy you know like so I didn't feel different like I didn't really think in my head that like I was gonna go in there and go to labor and delivery and possibly be induced so then I leave you know and I call my mom and I'm just bawling. I'm bawling so hard. Like, I'm just like, I can't believe this is happening. Like, I'm going to the house. I gotta go get his hospital bag. I gotta get our hospital bag. Like, I was just so emotional, like, after hearing that. Like, it really, like, I would say it really, like, broke my heart, I guess. Like, I knew that I was already 37 weeks, but my baby was not measuring 37 weeks. My, be my baby was measuring way smaller than that. So, like, for me, I was like, I just wanna, I wanted to make it to 40 because that would be more time for him to grow even just a little bit, even just an ounce, you know? So, the last time we had seen the specialist, he was weighing three pounds. And I believe that, like, for me being 37 he should have already been five to six pounds and so it was it was a big difference you know especially when you're talking about a baby the weight is a huge difference the weight is a big factor in everything so i didn't know what he was measuring now i didn't know if he was a little bit bigger a little bit smaller i didn't know because he wasn't three pounds i believe he was three pounds ten ounces he was not like even three pounds so we go to labor and delivery and um oh god and we go in and you know they they're already expecting me because obviously my doctor already told them like hey she's gonna be there like this and that so they're already expecting me okay so sorry um so we go to labor and delivery and um we do registration whatever and then um we go back and it wasn't i'm so used to going to triage that when they took us back to an actual room i was like oh this is for real like me and darren looked at each other and we were like i'm pretty sure we're having a baby and so it was very like surreal it was very like we had never seen the labor and delivery rooms we had never been back there we were always in triage we never went past triage so when we did it was just kind of like omg this is so real like we're gonna probably have a baby um so you know they put us in a room and she pretty much just tells us for tonight they're just gonna observe us and stuff like that and make sure that the baby's not in distress and make sure my blood pressure doesn't go because if your blood pressure goes and it stays high like that you can start having she i did not talk seizures so um then obviously i'll need medication for that and stuff like that so but she's like the ne but she was like tomorrow they'll the doctor will come in with the plan uh and stuff like that so we knew we weren't leaving we definitely knew we were not leaving so um so yeah, we stay there the night, and that's August 1st, so that's a Thursday. 
So Friday comes and it's August 2nd and the doctor comes in pretty early. I'm awake actually pretty early and I think it was just like all the adrenaline, everything that could happen and stuff. So it was just like a lot, you know, like it was like, oh my God, like this is happening. So I was up super early and I'm not a morning person at all. So the doctor came in and he pretty much was like, um, yeah, we're going to induce you. And so I was just like, okay like this is what we're doing and at this point wasn't so emotional like if it, it was emotion it was happiness i was so excited i was gonna meet my son like i was gonna meet my baby like finally the days that i've been waiting for you know and so um he go he kind of tells us the plan what, when it's gonna start and stuff so he goes eat something little and stuff and then um yeah we'll get you we'll get you going once you shower and you eat and stuff like that um just call us and we'll start um inducing you and stuff so at that point in time nothing mattered not him being small not the complications not my blood pressure not even me being scared for labor or the contractions or anything like that nothing mattered i was just so happy so excited and just so emotional honestly but emotional like in a happy way like i was so happy that this was happening finally you know and i was just happy because i was tired of having complications and i didn't know if he could go to 40 like and if i was gonna lose him at 40 weeks because of all the stress that our body was going through like my body was going through it his body was going through it like everything so it was just um it was a lot but I didn't even mention to say that they diagnosed me with preeclampsia. And that's why I was kept and that's why we were induced. Not just because of the preeclampsia, because all the complications before, the doctor was taking in consideration that this pregnancy was not a healthy pregnancy. Okay, sorry, the camera, the G7X died. And if you know this camera, the battery kind of sucks and we have yet to get another battery. So um, I'm gonna be filming off my phone. So sorry if the quality is different and the picture is different and stuff like that but i just want to finish this video and stuff so um god where was i oh so um yeah so that's what i was talking about that they diagnosed me with preeclampsia and stuff like that so the doctor just took into consideration all my complications and stuff and decided that that it's no longer healthy for us for me to still be pregnant it's no longer healthy for the baby to still be in my stomach so that was kind of um his decision and he definitely made sure sure that like he definitely asked me like are you okay with being induced like how do you feel and stuff and i was just like nope i'm ready and honestly i'm ready for all of this to be over so then um we go in and um finally it's time to get induced and stuff and i called the nurse and i showered everything and um they actually move us to a different room because we were really like at the end of the hall. And so I'm guessing that's like where they put like people they're just going to observe and then eventually induce. So we were uh, put into a room like closer to the nurse's station and stuff like that. So we moved to a different room and um, and then um, that's when they kind of like start telling me like, all right, this is what we're going to do and stuff. So. First things that they wanted to do was check to see if my cervix was thinned at all. And so they checked and my cervix was still thick as possible. Like it was not thinned at all. Mind you, I had not really contracted or did any like dilation or anything like that in that time or anything. Like I wasn't having anything like that like normal like pregnancies do. A lot of normal pregnancies already having like um contractions or braxton hicks and stuff like that i really didn't get that um too much or anything really didn't get that at all not that i remember like i had mild cramping but nothing like oh my god these are probably like braxton hicks contractions or anything like that so um sorry he's like right here and he's like staring at me um so yeah so um she goes well we kind of need to get your cervix to thin out first before we start the pitocin so we're going to put this little capsule inside you and it's kind of like almost like a tampon and it has like obviously medication and stuff so it's supposed to help my cervix thin out so i was like okay you know do what you got to do well i had to have that capsule in for 12 hours so i was going to have that in all day so obviously i was not about to have a baby that day and that's this was friday august 2nd when i got induced 
and so they started um, they put that capsule in me and I had it in I didn't really start contracting Friday or anything like that really didn't have too much Saturday morning comes and they need to obviously take the capsule out see where I'm at and stuff like that while well, I was super thinned out they take the, they take the capsule out it didn't really hurt too much or anything it just felt like com uncomfortable and she goes okay i want to check to see if you're dilated or like where your cervix is and stuff like that so i go okay you know thinking like whatever because i've obviously had been checked if i was dilated or anything like that so i know what that felt like and it wasn't as much like so painful it was just kind of like a little bit of pressure and just like uncomfortable and um but for that like i could not like when she tried to check if i was thinned out or dilated or anything like that oh my god the pain was so terrible. It wasn't even like pain. It just felt like when she put her fingers in there, like I had cuts all over like those walls, I guess. Like the walls that come in, your vagina walls, I guess. <laughs> so it just felt like I had cuts. Like it felt like that like um, cloth or material that it was around that capsule cut me all inside and I could not like I told her like no 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 I was crying and every time she tried to go in I was like moving myself upwards away from her hand and uh, so she just she stops and she was like okay I'm gonna like it's probably tender because of like that being in there for so long and stuff so she's like I think it's just um best if we give you the epidural which I went into this pregnancy not wanting the epidural. I was like, I'm going natural. I'm doing this. Like, nobody can tell me nothing. Nobody can tell me how bad it hurts. And I don't want the epidural. And so, um, I was just kind of like, at that point, I just wanted to get the ball rowing, ro rolling on the Pitocin and stuff like that. So, so she, she, um, she calls the person. Uh, anesthesiologist I believe to come do my epidural so they do my epidural and everything's great and um, they checked me and I think I was like one centimeter dilated and we were like okay well you know to start so she goes I'm gonna start doing um, the Pitocin this and that obviously I already had an IV in so they just started running the line and stuff and so I I would say about like the first hour or so maybe even like around like 11 ish noon um once it hit around that time i was feeling everything i was starting to contract i was feeling every single thing like i felt every contraction every fluid coming out of me um and stuff like that so i was in a lot of pain and the doctor called the anesthesiologist again to come do my epidural again so she did and it was a new person that came to do my epidural and um they did it and there i was like pretty much just um i i, for, I would say for the first teen first teen first 15 minutes of having my second epidural i felt fine i wasn't feeling anything i wasn't feeling contractions anything i kept pressing the button for the medication and um it wasn't it wore off it wasn't working i kept pressing it still wasn't working it felt i could feel it like flowing down my back but it was not doing anything like it was all it was doing was numbing my legs like i could not feel my legs but everything right there that was happening i felt everything and i felt the entire back labor as well and so um so yeah so i kind of just felt like every single thing like saturday was when i really was in like i guess would say like active labor contractions dilating every single thing so with that um you know we kept i just kept trying to breathe through it and when you're on the epidural you cannot they don't let you get up and obviously my legs were still numb at the time that i wanted to just get up and I, it got closer to being 10 centimeters i the i stopped pressing my button obviously and i it started to wear off on my legs and i really just wanted to stand up but even if it was worn off they were not going to let me out of bed because the medicine was still in my back like the epidural was still in my back so i just had to like sit there i couldn't do anything i just had to sit there and breathe through it lay there 
try to move the little movements that I could on the bed, but I literally could not walk through them. I couldn't um, move through them. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't get in the tub. I couldn't do any of that. Like I just had to sit there and deal with it. So, which really sucked. Honestly, it really sucked. I wish that it might have been a little bit easier had I been able to move through them or get up or do something or go in the tub or anything, you know? Any sign of relief, I wanted. So, um, she checked me twice before we found out that I was 10. So, first time, I was 5. And honestly, I was frustrated that I was 5 because honestly, with all the contractions that I was going through, I definitely thought that I was closer to 10. So, when she told me I was 5, I was just like, oh my god, I have 5 more centimeters to go. Like, how am I going to get through this? Like, I'm not going to have this baby today. I'm really not going to have this baby today. So, 5 came and then she checked me again and... I for sure thought I was at 10. I literally, I was like, I'm at 10 and I'm gonna push my baby out and it's gonna be great because I'm over these contractions. Like I can't do this no more. And she, she checks me and I'm at seven. Good old seven, good old seven centimeters. And I was just like frustrated. Like, oh my God, when I tell you I was so frustrated, like it was frustrating that I, was just like going through all this pain and there was nothing that I could do like I wasn't gonna get an epidural again like three times the charm or what like I just wasn't gonna do it and so I was frustrated and I was just like I just need to get to 10 already like I don't care do what you got to do I need to get to 10 and um in the this time period I kept feeling like fluid come out of my obviously down there like I just kept feeling like something was coming out of me and I kept like I would cry and I'm like, something's coming out of me. And my mom and my sisters would check and they'd be like, oh, it's just fluid or it's just blood or something. And um, there was like this one and I was like, I think my water broke or something like that. And I'm, and they, I believe they confirmed that my water did break. And um, sorry if it's a little like, I don't know, because honestly, I was really like, out of it like I wasn't really like there was just a point where I wasn't listening and I was just like I need this baby to come out already so yeah I believe my water broke in the mist and they confirmed that it broke and um so we were like okay well that's a good thing and I think that's when I had moved to seven centimeters and we were like okay it's gonna start moving faster and um then I started having a lot of blood come out and I think that's what they called like the bloody show is like after your water breaks you have like this bloody show and like you just start bleeding and stuff and a lot of people have that at home because their water breaks at home not at the hospital and then like they go through the bloody show and then they start contracting and obviously they have to go in and stuff so um hi and so yeah so I kind of consider that my bloody show or whatever and then, um, she, after seven, she said, I'm gonna come in two, another two hours and I'll check you again. Because if you know, they don't like to check you often because of, it can cause infection because they're literally putting their hand up there. So they, they like to check you as minimal as possible. And so I believe the first hour, I didn't make it to the second hour because I literally in that mist, I, of that hour, I was like, I'm at 10 and I need to push. Like, my baby, I felt like my baby's head was right there. And it just, like, with every contraction, I just felt more pressure, like, of something wanting to come out. And so, I believe, like, maybe, like, I would say the hour went by. And I told um, Darren and my mom, you need to call the doctor. I need to push. Like, I need to push bad right now. And my mom just kept telling me throughout the whole mess of me telling that whole hour. I was like, I need to push. I need to push. Um you okay and um she was just like no don't push don't push like that's not good like you'll tear and stuff and so um and obviously they don't want to be delivering a baby with no doctor i was already at the hospital so i go okay so they called the doctor because i was like i can't do this like i need to push like this baby needs to come right now and so they call the doctor and she checks me and she goes, yep, you're at 10, you're ready to push. And so I was like, oh my God, after she said that, I thought I was going to push. She goes, no, 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 like you're not pushing. Like we're not going to push just yet. Like we need to set up the baby. We need to heat up the baby bed and everything like that. And we need to get the NICU doctors in here. So they had already told us to begin with um, before we even started our induction 
that there was going to be more doctors than a, a normal labor because he was measuring small. They didn't know what he was going to come out like. And so she just was like, the NICU doctors have to be here because if they have to take him right away, they're going to take him straight to the NICU and stuff like that. Or if something's wrong when he's out, like they're here to help us. And so I was just like, okay, mind you, I was not thinking about the NICU. I, it, when I was ready to push, I was not like, oh, is, is my baby going to go to the NICU? Yes. Eh, or like what he's going to do. I was just like, I'm ready to push. So... She finally gets done setting up, which felt like eternity, and I kept telling my mom to tell her to hurry up, and I kept telling my sisters, like, she needs to hurry up, like, I need to push. Like, if they do not speed this up, like, I'm going to push by myself. And he's talking. And so, um, finally they set up, the doctors are all in, and we're ready to push. And she goes, okay, we're going to do a few practice pushes. And I was like, in my head, I was like, we ain't practiced it. I need this baby out. So when I pushed, I pushed with every... Sorry, someone called, so my phone stopped freaking recording. Anyways, so, yeah, so when I pushed, I pushed with everything. And so I think I pushed a total of four, four times. I didn't push more, I believe, than five minutes. And he was already out. And he weighed four pounds, and they confirmed that he can stay with me and stuff. So I was so happy. Like, that emotion, you guys, I cried because... If you guys know when your baby is about to go to the NICU or you think your baby's going to go to the NICU for them for them to be like, no, your baby can stay. You want that experience all the time. You want that experience with any baby that you have for your baby to be able to go to postpartum with you, not your baby to go somewhere else and you have to go somewhere else and you have to be separated. So... I was super excited that he was going to stay with us, that we were going to be here for a few days and that was it and we were going to go home and live our life. I know. I know. And so we were just super happy, super excited, super everything. And so he weighed four pounds even and he was 17 and a half inches. He arrived at 807. And so it was just 807 August 3rd, that Saturday. So I did have my baby within that i guess 24 hour um so yeah it was just it was great and then um you know we go to postpartum they play the little lullaby for your baby on the speaker and stuff and everything's good i'm super happy and i really couldn't believe that i was a mom that i just had my baby i just pushed out this whole human being out of me and it was just it was it was really like I don't know, really opened your eyes. Like, that feeling, I can never describe. Like, like you cry, you're happy. It's so bittersweet. Like, they're out. Um, oh, gosh. I, I've never really talked about my labor or, like, my feelings or anything. So, like, this is a lot. Huh. <sighs> Like, the feeling is just indescribable of, like, having them outside of your stomach. And you holding them for the first time. You're doing skin to skin. You're trying to get them to latch. You're feeding them. you changing their diaper. Like, you're a whole mom. Bless you. You're a whole mom. And you're going to need to take care of this baby for the rest of your life. And so, it was just, it was just amazing. Like, the feeling was just, it's indescribable, like I said. You... You have to like go through it to know the way like I feel like and like other moms will always say that like you never know really what love is until like you see your child and you have them here with you in this world and it's so true like the love is unconditional the love is it's just so different like there's no there's no other love like loving your your child there's no other love like that and so they love you unconditional you love them unconditionally like they are just they're amazing and so you're amazing yes you are you're amazing and so so yeah and then um we stood there obviously it was that night and then that next day um um we um we pretty much got the news that he was going to go to the NICU and stuff like that. And so, 
that will be more in the next video. I'm not going to touch base on that too much and why he went to the NICU. But you'll know more in the next video with Darren so we can explain kind of how we felt. Because obviously we did have him for one night and we took care of him for pretty much a full day. And so like for them to transfer him to the NICU, it was just a big like... It was just a big heartbreak, I guess. And it was just, it was honestly, it was, I think I felt like it would have been harder. It was harder as if he, they would have just took him right away. And I think that's what hurt a lot. So we'll kind of just discuss that more in our next video. But enjoy this video. Enjoy our pregnancy, our labor and delivery. And I'm sorry for the distractions. I'm sorry for like the little cuts here and there. Yes, I know, I know. And so, yeah, just enjoy this video. And um, we'll probably do like a video of revealing him and you guys can see him and stuff like that for the first time. But like I said in our last video, I didn't really want to show him too soon because there's a lot of people on here that obviously are very judgmental. And I think I just need to get used to the camera, get used to like YouTube and stuff before I start letting people bring hate into my life I guess so yeah so you know we'll probably do a reveal video of how he is now and how he's doing and stuff like that so yeah huh you want to do a video revealing them to you huh yeah and so yeah I just hope you guys enjoy this video and don't forget to um, subscribe to our channel, like, comment, share, and um, if you want to follow us, well, follow me on social media because Darren doesn't really have Instagram. He has Snapchat if you guys want to follow him. I'll link everything in the description and stuff like that. And um, if you guys have any um, questions, comments, or anything like that, you guys can leave them down below and we'll answer all of them in the next video and stuff like that. But... Yeah, I'm super excited. I finally got this video done and I hope that you guys enjoy it. And I really hope that if you guys have went through the same things that we went through, that you guys know that you're not alone and stuff like that. And just the reality of pregnancy and the reality of what things, every, anything can happen when you're pregnant. Like you could have the most perfect pregnancy and have the worst del delivery, you know? So like it's just anything can happen, but pregnancy is a great thing. It's a beautiful thing and it's just amazing and everyone should experience it and everyone should get to experience it. So yeah, but enjoy and see you in our next video.